हाँ ठीक है आर वी रेडी टू बिगिन ओके ठीक है हेलो आई एम रवि विश्वेश्वरैया शारदा प्रसाद जवाहरलाल नेहरू इज फ्रीक्वेंटली एक्यूज ऑफ इंश्योरिंग दिस इज डॉटर इंदिरा गांधी बिकेम प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन प्रीवियस वीडियो इंटरव्यूज ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई हैड एग्जामिंड the evidence in depth and i had come to the conclusion that there was no conclusive proof of jawaharlal nehru actively promoting his daughter to succeed him uh, and i had described how in 1952 uh, jawaharlal nehru had actually wanted jp uh, loknayak jayaprakash narayan to succeed him as the prime minister uh, please see my uh, youtube channel for my previous um, video interviews and jawaharlal nehru was very deeply disappointed by jay prakash narayan's repeated rebuffs of his invitations in um, 1952 1953 to join his cabinet as his deputy prime minister and to be groomed as his successor and i had also described how it was actually govind ballabh pant and u uh, n dhabar who had brought indira gandhi into politics and not her father so please see my previous uh, video interviews on my youtube channel where i had described in detail how govind ballabh pant and um, un dhabar had made indira gandhi the congress party's president in 1959 because they wanted to push their right wing anti socialist policies by operating through her as a pliant facade and jawaharlal nehru himself was quite equivocal and ambivalent about indira gandhi's becoming the president of the congress party in uh, 1959 and while nehru did not explicitly encourage her he did not dissuade indira gandhi nor her backers either and biju patnayak and kiri malviya they repeatedly urged nehru to induct indira gandhi into his cabinet as foreign minister and to groom her as his heir but uh, nehru turned the suggestion of uh, biju patnayak and kiri malviya so nehru turned this down firmly and indira gandhi certainly received excellent grounding while she served as uh, nehru's uh, official hostess because she observed national leaders and international leaders and world statesmen at very close quarters um, but i had described at length how uh, kuldeep nayar's assertions that indira gandhi saw top secret files Uh, before uh, uh, they were sent on to lal bahadur shastri who was the minister without portfolio i have said that those were uh, allegations made by kuldeep nayar were totally false totally wrong and in fact it was uh, govind ballabh pant um, who as uh, the home minister showed many top secret files to indira gandhi and uh, as this is what indira gandhi had admitted herself to my father h y sharada prasad and in fact it was uh, t t krishnamachari who had suggested to nehru uh, when nehru was incapacitated that lal bahadur shastri should take up uh, indira gandhi under his wing and that shastri ji should teach her the ropes but nehru just shrugged uh, off this recommendation by t t k that shastri should groom indira gandhi to be the successor after shastri and muraji desai always saw himself as the rightful successor to nehru 
and Moraji Desai made absolutely no secret of his ambitions to succeed Nehru as the Prime Minister. And five uh, powerful party bosses, the syndicate, uh, the syndicate consisted of um, Kumaraswamy Kamaraj of Tamil Nadu, uh, Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy of Andhra Pradesh, S. Nijalingappa of Karnataka, S. K. Patel of uh, Maharashtra, and Atulya Ghosh of uh, West Bengal. Uh, so this syndicate, they were absolutely dead set against Moraji Desai because the syndicate felt that Moraji Desai becoming the Prime Minister would be absolutely disastrous uh, for the Congress party. Uh, and while Moraji Desai was certainly the most competent uh, uh, administrator in Nehru's cabinet, and Moraji Desai alone, he had the guts and the courage to take hard, unpopular but necessary decisions. But Moraji Desai was detested by everyone for his rigid puritanical views, his massive superiority complex, his arrogance, his know-it-all arrogance, his sermonizing, and Moraji just did not have the charisma at all to win elections. So via the Kamaraj plan, Nehru wanted to see which political figure was the most acceptable to, to the rank and file of the Congress party. So my father, H.Y. Sharada Prasad, who was a con had worked with Nehru and was a, one of Indira Gandhi's closest advisors and confidants, so my father, H.Y. Sharada Prasad, stated that one of the tests which Nehru applied was to see which party leader the various factions of the Congress party went to for arbitrating their differences. And in um, October, 19, August 1963 to October 1963, uh, Kumar Swami Kamaraj of uh, Tamil Nadu, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, he came up with a scheme by to rejuvenate the Congress party, which was really demoralized after the disastrous war with China in um, 1962. And um, after the 1962 uh, uh, defeat against China, the Congress party had lost a series of by-elections to the socialists uh, who were led by Acharya J.B. Kripalani. And in fact, uh, Acharya J.B. Kripalani, he had been one of Nehru's closest associates at the time of independence, but uh, Acharya J.B. Kripalani drifted away from Nehru, and in fact, he moved a no-confidence motion against Nehru. So, under the Kamaraj plan um, in uh, October 1963, uh, Moraji Desai, Jugjeevan Ram, Lal Bahadur Shastri, uh, S.K. Patel, the strong man of Bombay, Biju Patnayak, uh, Chandrabanu Gupta, the chief minister of um, Uttar Pradesh, and Kamraj himself, Kamraj, uh, who was the chief minister of uh, Madras state, now it's Tamil Nadu. So all of them resigned as uh, cabinet ministers or as chief ministers, and they went to work for the Congress party and Kamraj himself took over as the president of the Congress party. Uh, by the end of 1963, it became clear that most uh, members of the Congress party supported Lal Bahadur Shastri as the successor to Jawaharlal Nehru. And uh, Nehru himself thought that Shastriji did not have the drive, that he did not have the ruthlessness required to lead the nation. But the mild-mannered Shastriji was, uh, was liked by the rank and file of the party for his ability to get people of differing opinions to work together in unison and his ability to forge a consensus among widely different factions. And while uh, Moraji Desai and Jagjeevan Ram were engaged in a bitter power struggle with each other, and all the other contenders had very powerful enemies, but Shastriji had the least number of enemies. Um, 
And in um, early 1964, uh, uh, January 1964, uh, Nehru suffered a stroke and he was incapacitated for a while. And soon after that, Kamaraj directed Nehru, I use the word directed Nehru, to take Lal Bahadur Shastri back into his cabinet as minister without portfolio. So, and none of the others who, uh, who had resigned in October 1963 under the Kamaraj plan were brought back into the cabinet. So Shastri ji functioned for all practical purposes as the deputy prime minister and as the acting prime minister. So this was a very clear indicator that Shastri ji was to be uh, Nehru's successor. And, but even after it became quite clear that Shastriji was the overwhelming um, choice of the Congress party to succeed uh, Nehru, but even then Biju Patnayak and uh, K.D. Malabia, they again urged Nehru to make Indira Gandhi the foreign minister and to groom her as his successor. But Nehru just shot down the suggestions. And my father, H.Y. Sharada, uh, Sharada Prasad, had written then, Nehru planned his succession very ingeniously through the Kamaraj plan. And Moraji Desai always believed that the Kamaraj plan was Nehru's plot to do him out of his due. And then my father, H.Y. Sharada Prasad, continued, it would have been ideal for the nation if there had been a candidate who combined in himself the best qualities of Moraji Desai and Lal Bahadur Shastri. But Shastri and Desai were wholly different in temperament and endowments. And my father went on, the whole country had a chance to see which of the two would prove more acceptable to the Congress rank and file to whom they would turn for settling their disputes. They turned to the affable, humble Shastri, rather than to the stern and rather imperiously aloof Moraji. So this is what my father H.Y. Sharada Prasad had written then. And um, again, I've uh, referred to a lot of what the well-known political analyst and columnist Kuldeep Nair has written about the succession to Jawaharlal Nehru in my previous videos. And Kuldeep Nair had asserted for decades that Nehru always wanted Indira Gandhi to, to succeed him as Prime Minister. And Kuldeep Nair said, even though he may have never enunciated it. And Kuldeep Nair had written in his book that once when um, Lal Bahadur Shastri was in a bad, uh, when Shastri was minister without portfolio um, uh, during, uh, after uh, Nehru's stroke. So when Shastri ji was minister without portfolio, once he was in a very bad mood, a foul mood, and Shastri ji told Kuldeep Nair that he wanted to leave Delhi and go back to Allahabad. And Kuldeep Nair reminded Shastri ji that he was Nehru's chosen successor. And Shastriji snapped uh, that Nehru's heart was set on his daughter. But Shastriji also added that even so, it would not be easy for her to, to ascend to the Prime Minister's post. So this is what Kuldeep Nair wrote in his book. And um, this, uh, in my opinion, this might... Um, have just been a momentary um, fit of peak on the part of uh, Shastriji. But what I find significant is that Shastriji had said that it would not be easy for Indira Gandhi to become Prime Minister. Uh, but then again, on another occasion, Kuldeep Nair wrote, the truth is that he, that is Shastriji, nursed a burning ambition to take over after Nehru. All of us who worked with him, uh, with Shastriji, could see that he wanted nothing more than to become India's next Prime Minister. 
and in another column also uh, Kuldeep Nair wrote uh, he uh, that is Shastriji exclaimed to me do you think that I am so much of a saint that I do not want to become prime minister and these assertions of uh, Kuldeep Nair about Lal Bahadur Shastri having this burning ambition to be uh, to become uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's successor these were disputed by uh, uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri's sons and then again as I had said earlier it was uh, T.T. Krishnamachari who had suggested to uh, Nehru that Lal Bahadur Shastri should groom in Indira Gandhi to take over after him that is after Shastriji and um, my personal information is that Shastriji had discussed uh, three possibilities about the succession to Nehru with his uh, confidants um, in the Congress party and the first possibility in uh, Shastri's opinion the most probable scenario uh, was that it would come down to, to a direct contest between uh, himself, between Shastri and Moraji Desai and that he, um, Shastriji felt that he would be able to defeat Moraji Desai easily because Moraji Desai was widely disliked. So Shastriji's assessment was that it would be uh, an anyone but Moraji uh, decision which is what the syndicate's uh, motto was anyone but Moraji. So Shastri's assessment was that the most probable scenario was that it would be a direct contest between Moraji Desai and Shastriji and because Moraji Desai was hated by everyone um, Shastriji would be the beneficiary and he would be able to easily defeat Moraji Desai. The second possibility that Shastriji considered was that of Indira Gandhi uh, contesting against him, uh, against Shastri. But Shastriji thought that this was very unlikely, that this was very remote because Indira Gandhi uh, would be in mourning and so it was very unlikely that she would uh, contest against him. But Shastri's assessment was that if Indira Gandhi, in spite of being in mourning, somehow decided to uh, contest against him, then it would be a close con contest between Shastri and Indira Gandhi. But Shastri still felt that he had an edge over Indira Gandhi, mainly because Shastri had the support of Kamaraj, who was the Congress party uh, president and the absolute supremo. And then the third uh, uh, possibility that Shastriji mentioned uh, to his confidants was uh, J.P. Jayaprakash Narayan. And Shastri said that the best qualified person to lead the nation was uh, J.P. And this is in fact was what um, Jawaharlal Nehru had felt way back in 1952. But Sha And Shastriji said that if there was even the slightest indication of interest from JP, then he, that is Shastriji, would immediately step aside in favor of JP. But again, Shastriji felt that it was very, very unlikely that uh, JP would be interested at all uh, because JP had, uh, in fact, turned down Nehru's uh, pleas uh, to join his cabinet as deputy prime minister um, and to be groomed as his successor. So basically, Shastri felt that. Uh, uh, if Indira Gandhi decided to uh, contest against him, it would be a close fight, but he still would emerge the winner because he had the support of Kamaraj and of the syndicate. Um, uh, uh, but Shastriji felt that it was unlikely that Indira Gandhi would throw her hat in the ring. And Shastri said that the most probable scenario uh, was that it would come down to Moraji Desai, versus uh, himself, that is versus uh, Shastriji and that Shastri would be able to easily defeat Moraji Desai because everyone detested Moraji Desai. So after uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's uh, demise on um, 27th May uh, 1964, um, the Home Minister uh, Gulzari Lal Nanda, he was sworn in as the interim uh, Prime Minister. But although Ho, the Home Minister Gulzari Lal Nanda was, he was as senior as Lal Bahadur Shastri or Moraji Desai 
or Jagjeevan Ram, but nobody took this mild-mannered interim prime minister as a serious contender because Gulzari Lal Nanda was too much under the grip of Hindu fundamentalists and he was thought to lack the drive and the initiative to handle the top job and he was little known outside the north, outside the Punjab and uh, Gujarat and the uh, Hindi cow belt and he was really uh, viewed upon as a labor leader, as a trade union leader rather than as a national figure. So, but it is correct, you know, I've talked so much about uh, Kuldeep Nair, but it is correct that Kuldeep Nair played a very key role in eliminating in totally eliminating the chances of Moraji Desai, uh, Moraji Desai's son, um, uh, Kanti Desai, the notorious Kanti Desai, had told uh, Kuldeep Nair immediately after Nehru's cremation that you can tell Shastri that we have the overwhelming support. So what Kuldeep Nair did, uh, and Kuldeep Nair was uh, uh, Shastri's press secretary, so Kuldeep Nair immediately put out a story in UNI, the United News of India, that Moraji Desai had staked his claim even before Nehru's ashes were cold. And uh, uh, this very hard-hitting report by Kuldeep Nair. So uh, Kuldeep Nair said, Moraji's son Kanti is busy collating lists of possible supporters in a deeply conservative society like India. This comes off as this comes across as sacrilegious. And Kuldeep Nair went on. In sharp contrast, Shastri spent his time and energy supervising Nehru's um, funeral rites. And people will never forget that Shastri served Nehru honestly and loyally. So Kuldeep Nair later wrote about the impact of his uh, report in UNI. Uh, when my story came out, Congress MPs were disgusted by what they saw as Muraji's crude ambition. At least 100 hitherto undecided MPs switched their support to Shastri. And Kuldeep Nair added that Kamaraj personally thanked him for his role, that's Kuldeep Nair's role, in making Shastriji the Prime Minister. And Muraji Desai always maintained that Kuldeep Nair had destroyed his chances. And Shastriji's, you know, very finely honed uh, political instincts uh, that neither Indira Gandhi nor uh, JP would put in a claim were absolutely accurate. Kuldeep Nair's article ensured that Moraji Desai was forced to withdraw uh, from the contest and Lal Bahadur Shastri was unanimously selected as the Prime Minister. Uh, shall we uh, finish here? Is that okay? Huh? Okay, has this come out all right? Okay, has this come out okay? Acha, okay. Okay. So, in uh, subsequent video interviews uh, on my YouTube channel, so I will describe how and why Indira Gandhi joined the cabinet of Lal Bahadur Shastri and how Indira Gandhi became the Prime Minister after Shastriji's demise at Tashkent in January uh, 1966. So, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and my IGTV channel and I'll be putting up a lot of videos on YouTube and please follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. My Twitter account is at RVP. At RVP is my Twitter account. This is Ravi Vishweshwaraya Sharada Prasad saying goodbye have a wonderful day thank you shall we finish okay see you okay see you okay